Okay, uh, let's get started then. So this is uh, this is going to be a pretty basic tutorial on uh, basic web development with uh, JavaScript and uh, HTML. So what I'm going to go over uh, is I'm going to start off by uh, uh, talking about a service called Brace.io, which lets you host static websites from your Dropbox account. Uh, and I'm going to show you how to get started with that, uh, how to uh, create a pretty basic app with Firebase, uh, which is uh, kind of like a front-end uh, data management uh, API. And, uh, and then I'll go over some pretty basic uh, JavaScript transformations. Uh, so first of all, uh, let's get started. Uh, so uh, if you don't already have one, uh, let's make a Dropbox account. Uh, so just go to dropbox.com and uh, click the sign up button and follow those instructions. Um, actually, is there anyone who doesn't have a Dropbox account? Okay, yeah, uh, yeah. Just uh, just make an account and uh, follow those instructions. Should take uh, a couple minutes. Okay. Uh, so once you've uh, once you've made a Dropbox account, go to brace.io and uh, click on the Get Started button. Um, and uh, a screen like this should come up. Uh, and once you're there, click on this link right over here where it says Create a Blank Site. And uh, just follow all the instructions that come up. Authorize, brace to use your Dropbox account. Um, and once once you've done all that, you should uh, get to a screen like this, but it'll have uh, some sort of tutorial video over here where there's, there's this white space. Uh, just click the play button and skip through that, uh, and you should be able to close out of that pretty easily. Is uh, anyone uh, having trouble with uh, Brace or making a Dropbox account? Okay. Uh, and is everyone done with that, or is uh, anyone still working on creating that app? Okay, we'll wait up for a couple minutes then. Uh, but while everyone's uh, uh, making this uh, Brace app, uh, I'll just quickly go over what Firebase is. So Firebase, um, Firebase.com, it's a way to build real-time apps. It's kind of like, uh, so if you use Firebase, you don't really have to worry about backends or anything like that. Uh, Firebase can take care of all of that for you. Uh, I think uh, Firebase uses a NoSQL database, and uh, it's a pretty powerful API. And uh, it basically handles all of the data management and uh, that sort of thing for you. Uh, so once once you've got uh, that Brace app made, um, there should be a folder in the home directory of your Dropbox uh, called Apps. 
And if you open that up and open up Brace, you should uh, get the whole URL for the sample app that you created. And uh, if you open up that folder, there should just be one little file in there called uh, index.html. Uh, is it, what are the names of the folders? Uh, CSS, images, JS, and there's a readme text. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Uh, if any of that other stuff comes up, uh, that's totally fine too. It just kind of creates the structure of the uh, project for you too. And uh, once you've got, um, and once you've got that uh, that file created, um, Uh, once you've got that file downloaded, uh, bring it up in your any text editor of your choice, and uh, should look like a pretty basic HTML page. Uh, So it should look uh, uh, it should look kind of different from this. It won't have uh, any of these tags down here. Uh, but this is kind of the basic structure of how HTML and uh, most markup languages are designed. Uh, so here in uh, this HTML document, we have the normal opening uh, opening tag for an HTML document, uh, and the way that the tags work is you have uh, something uh, something like this where you have an opening and closing angled bracket with uh, the name of a tag in here, uh, maybe some attributes about that tag, uh, giving it a title uh, or uh, size or something like that, uh, and some content and a uh, closing tag, which is just the same as the opening tag, but with a uh, backslash in front of it. And uh, we'll be going over some more examples of tags throughout the Hacktorial. Uh, so if you don't entirely understand the structure of the tag, don't worry about that just yet. I'll go into more detail about that. Um, so, was everyone able to download uh, and install Dropbox and uh, get that first Brace app started? Okay. Uh, anyone having any trouble with that? Okay, great. Uh, so, once we've got this uh, basic app started out, uh, just uh, get rid of everything except, uh, well, highlight everything in the HTML document and uh, delete that and uh, start out with an opening tag uh, and close that out. And then uh, create a head and uh, some body tags. Uh, and once you've got that done, uh, We'll, we'll create some uh, some other uh, sorry. We'll create some other uh, some other elements on this page too. Uh, 
Uh, so we'll start out with uh, div. And uh, we'll give it the attribute ID. And we'll call it message div. And uh, in uh, HTML, uh, divs and uh, spans, they're, uh, they're the most common and most popular tags that you use to store content and display it to a user. Uh, so think of a div kind of like a box. And you can put some other content inside here. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, is that better? Uh, so once you've got that uh, development created, you can uh, open up this uh, uh, HTML document in whatever browser you want, and it should look a little something like this. Uh, it shouldn't have any content other than just that sentence. Um, is anyone having any trouble getting to this point? Or is anyone not here yet? OK. Does uh, anyone need any help, or does anyone want me to go over something again? Yep. How did you open up the, uh, like, the website? Uh, the brace.io? Yeah, like, how did you? Oh, uh, this text editor? Yeah, like, <coughs> Oh, right here. Um, just go to the file, uh, index.html, and uh, double click on that. Uh, it should be, so the file should be stored in uh, uh, home apps brace, uh, and then the name, of, uh, uh, the name of whatever app you created. Uh, so once you've gotten to this point where you have just a basic div element with uh, some content inside it, uh, we can add some form elements uh, and uh, some other parts of a web page. So uh, there's, a, uh, there's a pretty fundamental, uh, so there's, a, there's what's called a form in HTML. It's a pretty simple tag. And uh, you can use forms to transmit data from uh, a web page to some other web page and uh, uh, use it as an input for something. Uh, so the basic structure of a form is just a form tag with a closing. Um, and forms have uh, an action. And this action is either a uh, post or uh, get. And uh, 
the action depends on what you want this form to do. So if you uh, if you have a form uh, that uh, with, where the action is get, uh, it makes an HTTP request which performs the action get on whatever the target web page is. And if you have a form that uh, says post, it would do the same thing, but it would make a post request instead of a get request. And uh, the use case for each of these types of HTTP requests is different. Uh, but for now, let's not worry about that. Let's just use a get request. But uh, generally speaking, if you're making changes to some content online, you'd want to post to a website. And if you're retrieving some information or redirecting a user to some website, you'd want to use get. And uh, for now, let's set the target to uh, google.com slash search. And uh, let's uh, let's give uh, let's give this form uh, one attribute, and it'll uh, be called query. Uh, so the way you create an attribute for a form is just with a tag called input. And uh, there's different types of inputs that you can have. You can have radio buttons, check boxes, whatever, and those can all be part of uh, a form. Uh, and you can specify them with the attribute type. Uh, so for this one, we'll just have a uh, uh, plain text field. Um, and the ID field. Uh, specifies what the name of the parameter that the form uh, that the form element is will have when it's passed on to the other website. So for now, we'll just name this one Q. Okay, uh, and then the next thing we'd want to do is uh, add a submit button. So uh, you can do that by creating another input. Uh, and once you've done all that, uh, your uh, index.html page should look something like this.
Uh, and once you have this form, uh, you should be able to put in some sort of search query and uh, click the submit button. Oops. Uh, And you should be able to uh, redirect the form forms information to Google.com and perform a search. Actually, um, I made a mistake on the form tag up here. Uh, the action is supposed to be the URL, and uh, instead of target, you should have uh, an attribute called method and set that to get, which is uh, the type of method you'd be using between post and get. Uh, does everyone have their form working, or is anyone having any issues with that? It appears, but it doesn't work. Okay. Um, uh, let me take a look at it. I don't think we've put it to work yet. No, we have. Uh, so if, uh, if you have the submit button and the, the text field, um, the uh, and uh, the form attributes here, it should be able, it should point that form to google.com slash search, and every time you hit the submit button, it'll pass those parameters onto google.com. Uh, does the form or anything else not work for anyone? If, uh, if you're having any issues, just Raise your hand and Alex over here will come around and help you out. So forms are always incredibly useful, especially, uh, so these HTML forms, you can use them for pretty much anything. Uh, you can collect data from users uh, and create some dynamic content uh, that updates based on user input or anything like that. Um, So is this form working for anyone, or uh, is anyone still having issues with it? Is there something that uh, anyone would like me to go over again? I, get to, I can get to Google when I do a search, and it's going to take to the Google home page, but it doesn't actually perform the search. That's okay. The search. Um, uh, can I take a look at your code real quick? Sure. Oh, never mind. This is Dropbox. So if you've been making changes to this same uh, index.html file, uh, you should be able to go to uh, admin. The name of your app dot brace dot io, and uh, you should uh, get to a screen like this, 
uh, yours would probably look a little different. Uh, and if you click on this tag-shaped button over here, uh, sorry, this list button over here, uh, you can click ship site, and uh, this website or this updated version of it should be live at the name of your app.brace.io, uh, and it can be used. Uh, so is, uh, is the form working for everyone, and was everyone able to uh, get that rolled out onto Brace.io? What's that? Uh, so if you, if you go to the admin panel, it's uh, this, uh, if you click on this list button right here, and then you can click on ship site. It should be admin dot the name of your app dot brace dot io. And uh, this is the admin panel, if anyone's been having any trouble finding that. So uh, once you've got that up, uh, we're going to make a couple changes to this form. Uh, so it'll be a little more useful for the app that we're about to build. So, uh, what we're going to be building is a really simple uh, demo of uh, uh, Firebase's uh, chat app. We're basically going to be building a sample chat app with uh, Firebase. So if we just rename these... Uh, uh, if we uh, rename some of these form fields and uh, 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 add in some Firebase code, uh, we can do that pretty easily. So we'll just delete these two form tags here real quick. Uh, we'll be redoing this submission part of forms uh, in JavaScript. Um, we don't need the form or the key values from that anymore. Uh, and we can get rid of this ID attribute over here. And uh, we're going to change the name of this field from Q to uh, name input. And uh, I guess the placeholder search doesn't really make any sense anymore, so we'll call it name. And over here, we'll change the type to text. And uh, we'll rename this field to uh, message input. And uh, we can replace this attribute with the placeholder tag. And uh, once you're done with that, your web page should look something like this over here. Uh, uh, the div element with two text inputs below it. Um, is anyone having any trouble getting to this point, uh, or has everyone gotten these uh, text fields uh, displaying properly on their web page? Okay, if uh, anyone needs any help with the text fields or anything, just raise your hand and Alex will come by and help you out. Uh, so now that we've got this uh, 
now that we've got this basic skeleton uh, of the website ready, uh, let's go over a couple uh, basic syntax things with JavaScript, uh, which should be pretty helpful. So uh, you can open up the JavaScript console on Chrome pretty easily uh, by going to the settings toolbar over here, uh, going to the developer tab, or tools and then developer tools, uh, and JavaScript console. And you should see a little something like this over here. Uh, and with this console, you can uh, directly type commands uh, into here, and it'll execute that JavaScript code. And uh, JavaScript is basically the language of the internet. Most websites, most uh, most front-end websites have uh, are a lot of JavaScript code, and that's how you can dynamically change content on the web page. Uh, with a user's actions, and you can do a lot of interesting things with JavaScript. You can uh, make transformations on div elements, uh, style things, make things look nice, change colors, add new content based on user input. So let's just go over a couple pretty basic things here. Uh, so JavaScript, uh, it's pretty different from Java. Uh, it has some similarities here. So um, just a basic thing, uh, the print statement is basically console.log and uh, the input here. Uh, and you just see the uh, JavaScript console spits out hello world if you type in console.log. Uh, now, there's, there's another attribute here you can call the document. Uh, and document refers to the web page that you're on currently. So you can see that over here, if you just type in document semicolon, uh, the entire content of this web page comes up uh, in the console. So you could also potentially change document.location equals google.com. Uh, and this line of code will take us away from this website uh, or this web page and change the URL in the, the top over here to google.com instead of uh, whatever it is the name of the website is. Um, and uh, there's some other things that you can do with div elements specifically. So this one over here, we've got map. So that dollar sign refers to a library called jQuery, and uh, I actually forgot to include that in this document over here, so I'll just add that in real quick. Um, and I will post a link to this on the Facebook event page so everyone has that pretty easily.
and uh, the tag for including um, the tag for including a script or anything like that looks something like this. Uh, so for a script, it would just be an opening angle bracket for a script, and you'd give it the attributes type uh, so that the browser knows that you're including a JavaScript uh, file, and then you set the source to this. Uh, and once you've included jQuery, uh, you should be able to open up the JavaScript console and type in a dollar sign, and uh, it returns you a minified version of the jQuery library. You don't need to worry about how that's implemented. Um, uh, you can just use it for now. Uh, so what we can do now is uh, we can pass in uh, messages div. Uh, and we can look at messages div dot in your HTML. And uh, uh, And uh, you should be able to make changes to elements of the web page with jQuery like that. Uh, so if, uh, if you're not entirely sure with uh, what's going on with uh, jQuery, you don't need to worry about that for now. Uh, I'm going to go into some more detail uh, on jQuery with some more examples in this next part. Uh, so now what we're going to do is we have these two form inputs and a div called message div. Uh, so, uh, so let's delete all the content from message div and uh, just have this on our web page for now. So the next thing that you're going to want to do is include another script uh, from Firebase and uh, I'll uh, add, uh, add the location of that on the uh, Google on the Facebook event for this too.
And uh, I'll throw up a little code snippet too. And uh, just copy this uh, this JavaScript script here into uh, our, the bottom of the body tag, just like that. And let me add this on paste in. So once you've got that all done, you should uh, have something that looks a little something like this instead. And uh, once you've got this uh, on your web page instead of uh, the blank content, uh, you should be able to type in your name and then some sort of message. Um, okay. uh, but once we get this working, you should be able to type in your name and some sort of message and uh, hit enter and have it show up in a constant stream of all the messages. mistake earlier with the ID of this development earlier. It should be messages div instead of message div. Uh, so once you get that working, you should have something that looks kind of like this. You can put in your name and uh, send messages uh, to everyone with this. Okay, just uh, give me a second. Uh, I think I made a mistake with this code here. Uh, I'll just debug that real quick.
Uh, okay. Um, so it looks like it's working now. Uh, I think I was missing an angle bracket somewhere in the script, but I just copied the whole uh, file to a new GitHub gist. Um, and uh, and you can just uh, copy and paste that. I'll throw that up on the Facebook event too. Okay. Uh, so once you've got that working, you should be able to. Uh, play around with that chat a little bit, and all the messages you type should show up here, too. Um, is anyone having issues with getting this up and running? Uh, does anyone want me to hold up for a couple minutes while you catch up? OK, cool. Is anyone else uh, still working on getting uh, this web page up on their box? Is anyone having any trouble at all? Just raise your hand. Uh, Alex can come around and help you. Alex, pay attention. Okay. Uh, so while everyone's getting to that point, I guess real quickly, I'll go over what's inside the script over here. Uh, so uh, this over here should give you a little bit of a better understanding of what JavaScript is and how it works. So uh, over here, uh, this is how variables in uh, JavaScript generally work. If you want to declare a variable, uh, just it's the var keyword and then the name of the variable. Uh, variables in JavaScript aren't strongly typed. Uh, and they're also dynamically typed, I believe. So 
If you've got something like messages ref, it could refer to an integer, uh, a dictionary, uh, or anything really. Uh, and the way objects in JavaScript work is they're essentially implemented as uh, dictionaries where uh, you'd have a key and then a corresponding value to that, and that corresponding value could be anything. It could be a function, it could be a primitive type, or it could be another object. Um, and uh, this over here, it creates a new Firebase object, and uh, this Firebase method is uh, declared and uh, implemented in uh, this Firebase.js file over here. And uh, these two sections of code here, uh, so this one over here, uh, it's, uh, so this is built on jQuery. So we're taking the uh, messages in, message input uh, over here and we're modifying this object within the document so that on key press, uh, we change the, what happens when we press a key to this function over here which is known as an anonymous function. And uh, this function, it doesn't have a name or anything, it's just passed into this parameter over here, and the value of key press is now set to this function, which takes in one input, which is the value of the key that's pressed. So basically what this function does is it checks the key. If you're pressing the enter key, it ent uh, enters into this if statement, and executes the body of the code. So this would be storing a temporary variable that's set to the uh, value contained within name input and creating another temporary variable and setting that to the content contained within message input and uh, pushing that onto the Firebase object uh, with a name, uh, with a, this is just a dictionary object or a regular JavaScript object rather uh, that uh, pushes everything onto Firebase, and it resets this value of messages input back to a blank string so that the user can now enter another message and continue to participate in the chat. Uh, so this function is now what happens every time you press a button uh, while your mouse or key is over, uh, uh, over this. Um, yeah, uh, the, the HTML is being escaped actually, so you, you can't break the you can't break the chat client with uh, HTML tags like that. Yeah. Uh, and then last thing over here, uh, this is adding a callback to the Firebase client over here. So every time uh, a new item is added into this Firebase uh, instance, uh, it's updated. Uh, the current web page is updated, so we get a new div element with uh, the text of the newest message, uh, an opening tag for uh, emphasis, and then the the name of uh, sorry the name of uh, the name uh, that's been passed in for that. Uh, uh, that data in the Firebase, and uh, it appends it to messages div. And uh, then it scrolls messages div all the way to the bottom of the page. Um, does this code snippet not make sense to anyone? Is there any specific portion that uh, you'd like me to go over again? Oh, okay. Uh, so basically, with uh, functions like this, you can uh, make changes to a website and uh, have dynamic content displaying uh, in real time. Uh, anyway, so we've got this, uh, this really nice chat client here, but it doesn't really look so great. Uh, so we, we can really make some changes to it uh, and have the styling look a lot better. Uh, and we can do that with uh, CSS, which is basically the standard uh, way to add styling to a web page online. Uh, now, does anyone have any questions about what we've done so far? Or would anyone like me to hold on for a little bit uh, while we catch up? Okay. Uh, so, next thing we're going to do 
Uh, we're going to go into the folder where we have index.html. Um, now, I just downloaded index.html so that I could make changes to it on my uh, local box. But you should have uh, three folders right here. Uh, one should be called JS, one should be called uh, CSS, and I think the last one is either called IMG or Assets. Uh, so we're going to go into the CSS folder. And uh, we're going to create a new uh, uh, CSS document over here. Um, and uh, we'll call it index.css. Uh, so the next thing you want to do is once you've uh, once you've got Button there, uh, you can add another link over here. So, from the example that I posted on that GitHub gist, uh, you should have a line that looks something like this in your HTML document. And we're going to do something uh, pretty similar. We'll create a new link to a new style sheet that we're about to write. And uh, that's all you need to link that CSS document into this web page. So uh, looking at this, uh, it doesn't look too bad. But it would be nice if we could get a better font on this text over here. And maybe if these two boxes were a little more centered, it would be good. Uh, so, uh, so we'll make two new CSS classes in this new, uh, new file that we made. So, um, so the way that you define a CSS class is you do dot uh, uh, and whatever you want to name the class. So let's name this uh, messages, and you'd open a curly bracket, and all the attributes would just go inside there. And the other one, Uh, we can call it input fields. Uh, so let's uh, let's set the font color to to gray. This uh, um, actually let's let's set the font color to white, and we'll change the bra uh, background here to black. So white color should be. Uh, pound zero zero zero, and uh, the way colors are defined in uh, CSS and HTML is with uh, hexadecimal numbers, and uh, each uh, basically it's a base sixteen number with uh, three digits, and each digit refers to a specific value for red, uh, red, blue, and green. Um, Uh, and you can also use uh, regular text here. Uh, so while we're here, let's go back to index.html. And uh, we've got the div called messages div. And uh, in uh, most fields, if, you, if you've included a CSS file, you can assign a, a class to just about any element. And those elements will take on the attributes of that class. So Let's set this class to uh, messages. It was messages, I think. Uh, and now, if we refresh the page,
Okay, I've moved around the files in this app a little bit. Uh, anyways. So if you've made those changes to the CSS file and uh, the, uh, the HTML file, your uh, web page should look a little something like this. Um, and uh, making some more changes to the CSS. Uh, let's, let's change the, the size of this uh, text to be a little bit bigger, because this is looking pretty small. Uh, it's not that readable. So uh, change the attribute font size. And uh, there's three measures that you can use to change a font size here. Uh, there's points, which is the same measurement that you'd use in a Word document. So 12 points is about uh, one, I believe, one uh, four sixteenths of an inch. Uh, but that doesn't really make much sense for a website. So there's also another uh, measurement for sizes on a web page called EMs. And an EM is the standard size of, uh, of a text on the standard size of text on the user's computer. So one EM generally refers to the default size. So the default size on this computer over here, this is one EM, that's about 12 points. And uh, uh, let's set it to be 1.5 EM. And uh, the text is a little bit bigger and a little easier to, uh, to read. Uh, and then making some changes to this input field, input field uh, class. We can change the line. Uh, change the alignment uh, to be centered. And we can create a new div element to contain, uh, contain these uh, fields. And uh, it moves to the center of the web page. Um, so, just real quick, I'm going to get rid of uh, that background color change and the text size change. You can leave it as is if you want. Um, but, uh, if you want to change the font as well, you should be able to do that too. Uh, Google has a really nice fonts library. You can go to fonts.google.com. Uh, Google.com slash fonts, my bad. Uh, you can find a font that you like. Uh, this one should be good. And uh, 
you can add it to your collection, use it, and uh, include the font as a link in uh, any HTML document. And uh, this just adds some uh, CSS into uh, into your document uh, that uh, refers to whatever font that you want to use. So over here, the font family is called Lido. And this is normal size, normal weight, and all that good stuff. So over here, we can uh, go back to the messages, uh, the default CSS file. We can. Uh, uh, change the font family to Lido. And uh, the font changes to something that looks a little bit nicer. Uh, and uh, then lastly, um, I'm just going to go over some quick uh, information on how to use this other library for keeping all of the elements on a web page kind of in a grid format. Actually, before we go on, uh, does anyone have any questions about styling or how to make changes to a CSS file or how to use a CSS class in a, an HTML document? Yeah. Uh, okay, let's move on then. Can you post your code to uh, paste that again? Yes, yeah, of course. Yes. Um, I'll just make a ch uh, I'll just make the changes to that last uh, gist that I put on GitHub then. Uh, and the, the code for the website shouldn't have changed all that much. It should be more or less the same, just with uh, new CSS classes for each element. Um, uh, so yeah, um, really quick. Uh, there's a framework called Semantic, which lets you manage, uh, manage your web page to make it responsive and uh, look nice on either mobile or desktop version. And depending on the width of the web page, uh, uh, you should be able to uh, add elements in a grid format. Uh, and just copy and paste this uh, link tag into the document, uh, and that should include this uh, CSS file. And uh, the main classes that uh, Semantic has in their uh, CSS framework, the only things that you should really worry about are uh, grid classes and mobile grid classes. So if you add uh, to these class tags over here, so in, a, in HTML you can have uh, the class attribute referred to multiple CSS classes. So we've got the, 
the messages class over here, and we can add a grid 100 class here, and a mobile grid 100 class. So this means that on a mobile website, each of these elements will, uh, this is, so this div element will stretch out to take up the entire width of the web page, and uh, it will do the same on a mobile ver on a mobile phone as well. And if you're to change these numbers over here to 50 or 75, uh, it would change that to be the percentage of the width on uh, either of those web pages as well. So, real quick, uh, I'll keep those at 100 and. Uh, Uh, and add uh, these two classes to the uh, two input fields that we have. Uh, so over here, we still have these two stacked up right next to each other. Um, and if we were to make it shorter, like a mobile website, and you can see that all this text wraps around, oops, um, all this text wraps, text, sorry, text uh, wraps around. Uh, it didn't do that earlier before we added those uh, tags for semantic. And uh, over here, um, let's, I think I made a mistake, but uh, over here, the uh, two tags for the form element should stack up onto each other. Actually, I think uh, I can't demonstrate that here because uh, the web page doesn't get narrow enough. But you can see, see some of the responsiveness from uh, from the wrapping of the text on the main messages div page. Uh, okay. Uh, so the last thing I want to go over um, before I wrap this up is just some basic transformations with uh, JavaScript uh, and CSS. Uh, so I think we're pretty much done with. Uh, the coding portion that you can follow along with. But I did want to demonstrate uh, some of the things that you can do with JavaScript. Uh, so, uh, Um, okay. uh, so, uh, with uh, using CSS only, there's a CSS tag called WebKit Transitions, and uh, you can use those to change the width of a div element on a web page, uh, move its position to the right or to the left, have an element fade in or out, and you can have all of those actions associated with a user click action or submitting some sort of form data. So something like these uh, transformations can be used to create more dynamic content on the web. So this just uh, stretches out this element to be wider over the course of two seconds. And uh, uh, this, these are the two corresponding CSS tags with that. Uh, so I just wanted to show you guys that so that you could kind of get an idea for some of the more advanced things that you can do with uh, JavaScript and uh, CSS. Um, and there's plenty of uh, great examples on W3Schools, uh, GitHub, on how you can properly use JavaScript and uh, CSS transformations. Uh, does anyone have any questions about JavaScript or styling or anything like that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I think that's pretty much all that I have. Uh, if anyone's still having trouble, feel free to stick around. Uh, I'll come around and help you guys out uh, in finishing up the chat demo that we made. Um, but other than that, that's all I've got. Thanks for uh, coming out, guys. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah.